Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at this budget tablet. This is the Vankyo S30. It's a fairly good price tablet. It's around $160 or £150, which means that it's even cheaper than a secondhand iPad that's a few years old. So today I'm going to be helping you guys decide whether you should actually pick this up, the good things about it, the bad things about it, and really whether you guys can find this useful. So let's just jump into it. The first thing I want to talk about, which is surprisingly very, very good, is the screen quality. The screen quality, it's a 10.1 inch screen, but it's 1920 by 1200, which means when I'm on the web, I'm looking at content, reading things, and even when I'm watching movies, everything's surprisingly very crispy. And I found that watching things like media and everything is surprisingly very good. Even the colors are actually not too bad, and the viewing angles are not the best in the world, but at least they don't color shift. The only real drawback that I've seen is that it's 50 hertz rather than 60 hertz, so it's not quite as smooth as your usual Android experience, especially when you're playing games or just swiping. It just feels a little bit slower than usual. Something else to consider that is a bit of a drawback is the brightness. The brightness isn't quite as bright as many other devices out there. I would say compared to a standard Android smartphone, it's only around 70% the brightness which that can reach. So a little bit disappointing, Outdoors, it's not the greatest. It does have tons of glare. And I found it kind of frustrating because it was really hard to see the screen just because I can see everything behind me. I can see myself looking into the tablet. I mean, it's kind of like holding up a mirror and just staring at myself. It's really hard to see. Other than that, when I'm in my room, when I have the curtains closed, when I'm in bed, when I'm watching things, this is exceptionally good quality. And I would say for media content, this is definitely something you might want to consider. In terms of audio, however, it's definitely not the greatest thing in the world. I was really surprised when I got this. I saw there was stereo speakers and I kind of got a little bit excited. I was like, oh wow, stereo speakers in a tablet. And then I used them and I realized that they're not really the best thing in the world. And I guess they get the job done. Here's just a little sample so you guys can hear a song. So yeah, it's definitely not the best thing in the world, but it, I guess it does kind of work. You can sort of listen to movies and things, but I would recommend plugging in headphones or connecting a speaker. Now talking about speakers and connectivity, this does do Bluetooth 5.0, which means it's more battery efficient, there is longer range, and overall it can connect multiple devices and it's just a lot better than the previous 4.0. So I'm super psyched to actually see that in a budget tablet. I was actually a little bit surprised when I read that off the sheet, but it's nice to have it, definitely. Something else I was surprised to see was USB Type-C. For such a cheap tablet, to see something as standard as USB-C was a real shock to me. Now, it does not have fast charging, so it does take three or four hours to charge up. However, it does last a long period of time. The capacity is 6,000 milliamp hours, and overall I found it lasting about 11 hours when reading, just casual sort of content here and there. But when I was gaming or watching videos or playing music at the same time, it only lasted around six or seven hours, which is still surprisingly quite good. Standby time's also pretty good as well. I left it for about a week and came back and it dropped from 80% to about 40%. So that's about half the battery life in about a week, which is not terrible. It's definitely not too bad. I was actually surprised that the thing didn't die. Now, when I tell you the processor, you guys are going to be a little bit surprised, but it's definitely not as powerful as it seems. It's an octa-core 1.6 gigahertz processor. And yes, it does sound pretty insane and really overpowered. Um, but it, it isn't that overpowered. It just kind of gets the job done. If you're playing games, I found that it was actually able to play quite a few games. I played Call of Duty Mobile. I also played Clash Royale and Clash of Clans. And I pretty much had no problems with the playability, the experience or anything like that. The only issue was that I did have the quality settings pretty low, but other than that, it played pretty well. And now we're going to talk about storage because how many things are you gonna be wanting to put on this? I don't know, but the capacity is 32 gigabytes. It's not a lot, you can maybe fit a few big apps and games, and that's pretty much it. But it does have expandable storage, it has a SD card slot on the side, so you can put up to 128 gigabytes in, and you can have quite a lot of storage in this device. But in terms of build quality, this tablet's actually also pretty good. The whole front panel is made of glass. It's very nice when touching it. It's very solid feeling. And the actual metal body is also really, really nice. So the entire back is made of metal. It's aluminium. And overall, it's pretty substantial. It feels very good in the hand. And the only real thing made of plastic is the volume rocker as well as the power button. 
I mean, it's not quite as solid as other things out there like an iPad, but it's, it's a little bit creaky. But I guess it's a budget tablet, so what can you really expect? But to me, it seems pretty exceptionally good considering the price. And now I want to talk about the camera. The camera is definitely not the best in the world, but I found that if you have decent lighting, you can actually take some okay shots. And once you sort of go into the dark or you sort of get into a shadow spot, you really can't take any pictures. It's just completely dark. There's no sort of dynamic range whatsoever. It just all completely blows out of proportion if you have a light background and a dark subject. But it is a tablet. I wouldn't really consider myself taking many pictures on a tablet. And really the only purpose would be, I guess, for scanning documents or maybe doing some video calls. And I guess it would be okay for that. It's definitely not the best though. It does look okay. Um, it's passable, but I'll let you guys decide. Here's just a few samples. In terms of like the software that comes on here, it's Android 9.0, so it's not the latest software. However, I found really no issues in terms of support. All of the apps I wanted from the Play Store were working fine. And really the whole experience is pretty stock to me. Um, pretty much everything feels very stock. The only real thing that's a bit different is the launcher isn't like a stock launcher. It's some sort of Chinese one, but it does look a bit like a pixel launcher. So I really had no issue with it. I just swapped it out for Nova launcher and I was good to go. Now, something else I just want to point out is that there's only three gigabytes of RAM. So when you are playing games and you're doing lots of sort of excessive things like that, when you switch between apps, it's probably going to restart the game. It's not very good at holding things in the background, um, but it's not much of an issue. I mean, you're not really multitasking much while playing games. If you do have a browser open and you have like Facebook, it has no issue. It just swaps between them, but heavier stuff, it does tend to restart. But other than that, I would say my experience is pretty good on this tablet. It's very smooth and it's actually surprisingly usable. Most of these budget tablets I've tried in the past, they kind of frustrate me in a way. Um, but this one feels like it could actually be a device that I would use. Um, it's definitely not the fastest thing, but the screen is surprisingly good, like I mentioned. So I feel like the screen is really the window to your, your device. And so it, that being good, it makes me want to use this tablet a little bit more than if it had like a 360p terrible display. But yeah, I would recommend this to you guys if you don't want to spend too much money, you want something very usable and you want a high quality screen and long battery life. Maybe wouldn't recommend it if you want something to take high quality pictures on. The speakers are not very good as well, so you're probably going to have to dish out some money for some headphones. So depends on your opinion, but you might want to dish out some more money for a better tablet. That's up to you. But that's my opinion on it. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching guys and peace out.